Did you know that tooth decay was one of the leading causes of death with our ancestors? While that may seem unbelievable, our teeth are a gateway to the rest of our body. So if you have tooth decay or an abscess or cavity that's been untreated, that bad bacteria can quickly get into your bloodstream and cause a host of issues. Our teeth are typically doing two different things, or they're always doing two different things. They're either demineralizing or remineralizing. And the remineralization, I'm going to have a tough time with that throughout this, of our teeth is about um, rebuilding and replacing the mineral ions of our teeth so that they remain strong and can fight off bad bacteria that can later cause decay. So the three things that are a big deal when it comes to if our teeth are going to be remineralized or demineralized is nutrition. We can never get around nutrition when it comes to being healthy. But nutrition, um, the pH of our saliva, and then also our oral health care. Okay, so what we decide to do to take care of our teeth. And those three things should be brushing our teeth for sure, and in this case, using a toothpaste. You can use mouthwash, and then also flossing and or oil pulling and or using a water pick, whatever you do to get between your teeth. Today, I'm going to show you how to make your own toothpaste with safe ingredients that are also effective to help prevent tooth decay and help in the remineralization of your teeth. I've been using this recipe for about four to five years, and the main reason that I switched from conventional toothpaste to a more natural toothpaste are because some of the ingredients, some of the artificial sweeteners that are in traditional toothpastes. So one of the main highly controversial ingredients in regular toothpaste is fluoride. So remember, we have fluoride in our water fountains, and there was this big push for fluoride back in the day. I remember it when I was a kid and putting it in the water fountains because it was shown to help um, prevent tooth decay. Now, what's happened down the line, and like I said, it's highly debatable, so some people in conventional dentistry medicine will absolutely disagree with this, but it's been proven to be highly toxic. The other ingredient that can cause some issues is glycerin. Glycerin is, it, it creates a very thin coating on the teeth itself, and that can help to slow down the remineralization process because things can't get to your teeth like they would normally. So with these different ingredients, I'm going to show you and tell you some of the benefits. Okay, now for the ingredients and why these ingredients are being used. First thing I'm going to put in here is a calcium powder, calcium magnesium powder. This is five tablespoons of calcium magnesium powder. The point of this is it strengthens your enamel and helps prevent tooth decay. Okay, and I'm putting this into a food processor so that it blends nice and smoothly. If you don't have a food processor, you can easily do this with your um, just with a whisk but you do want to make sure that you're not using a magic bullet. The calcium magnesium powder, I did find this out the hard way, creates some pressure and it can explode. And you really don't want that when it comes to your toothpaste. Next up, I'm putting in pink Himalayan salt, okay? And the Himalayan salt helps to neutralize the bacteria from sugary foods. It freshens your breath, helps with bleeding gums, and it acts as a tooth whitener. Okay, surprisingly, uh, the salt, and that's pink Himalayan salt. Next up, I'm putting in, I'm sorry, and with the pink Himalayan salt, that was um, a half teaspoon. Yes, a half teaspoon of pink Himalayan salt. Next up, I'm putting in three tablespoons of xylitol. Xylitol is a sugar alternative. Not only does it make this recipe a little bit more palatable and sweet, Xylitol also helps prevent tooth decay by reducing plaque. It blocks acids that demineralize enamel, reduces gingivitis, and has, um, let's see, it, it helps with the pH of your saliva as well, okay? Next up, I'm putting in three tablespoons of distilled water. And we're using distilled water in this case because regular tap water has bacteria in it, and distilled water is going to be one of your cleanest um, sources of water to help prevent uh, bacteria. This just makes it because this is going to be a squeezable recipe. Next up, coconut oil. 
I'm putting in three tablespoons of coconut oil. Coconut oil is amazing when it comes to oral health. Not only does it help to freshen your breath, but coconut oil also helps to moisten your mouth, helps prevent tooth decay, helps to prevent and treat gingivitis, freshens your breath, and strengthens your teeth. Okay? Next up, um, calcium. I'm sorry, we already did the calcium powder. We're going to do the bentonite clay. Bentonite clay, a lot of folks will think, is extremely woo-woo from when you hear about what it does. So it helps to absorb toxins and neutralize bacteria by binding to those toxics and bacteria, as well as helps to whiten your teeth. So it binds to things just with the clay itself. Now, because of this, binding and 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 um, binding to toxic metals as well you should not have bentonite clay in contact with metal objects this is why i'm using a plastic um, blade in my food processor you could also just put this in mix this in by hand after mixing in the rest of these ingredients but because i'm using the plastic i'm just going to dump all of this in and this is two tablespoons of the bentonite clay okay Next up, this is just mainly some things that just help with flavor and um, just some extra protection. This is a germ-fighting blend by Plant Therapy. If you go with some of the other network marketing essential oils, it could be called Thieves Oil or just like another type of germ blend. I am putting in 15 drops here. I can't count the top. There we go. And what this does, it just has a blend of essential oils, um, lemon, clove, eucalyptus, cinnamon, cassia, and rosemary. And this actually has been scientifically proven to help just help with germs, you know, just to keep your teeth nice and clean. You can also, I also use this whenever I'm making soaps and um, use it when in my um, all-purpose sprays just because it helps to get rid of germs and it's um, naturally antibacterial. The other one is peppermint oil. I'm putting in 15 drops of this. Okay, and you really want to make sure that you're using a therapeutic level peppermint oil. This stuff won't be ingested. We're not drinking it, but you still want to make sure that you're using a decent quality oil there. The peppermint oil helps to kill bacteria that causes gum disease and also helps to freshen your breath. Actually, I think I'm going to put a little bit more in here. I really like the pepperminty, the pepperminty flavor. There we go. So I put in a total of 20. All right. So this is now in my food processor. I'm going to put the top on and then blend this until smooth. Um, looks amazing when it's finished. Uh, that's just kind of how it goes. But what I usually do, I usually put this in a nice glass container because I'd like, again, to eliminate the plastics in my life for the most part. I really wish they made a glass food processor bowl. That would be awesome, but I have not seen one yet. So I'm just using a spatula here, putting it into this glass container. Again, if you want it a tad bit smoother, put in the metal. Um, definitely use a smaller food processor. I don't have a, food, a smaller one, but that would definitely help to make this a tad bit um, smoother. And use the metal blade and then just mix in the clay later. I just opt to not do that because I don't feel like taking the extra step. All right, so this is what it looks like in my glass container. And then I also use this cute little silicon thing to uh, put my toothpaste in for everyday use, okay? I'm just gonna mix this up a little bit more. Now, here's the thing. It's not gonna have a lot of sudsing. That's another thing that's in conventional toothpastes that actually works against us. The SLS or a sodium I think that one's the sodium laureth sulfate. Now, it helps create those bubbles that we think are so amazing and that makes things clean, which is not true. So that's it. I'll keep this um, in my bathroom. It typically lasts in this container for about two weeks. And then the rest of this 
put a top on it and put it in the fridge and that will last for at least a month or so. So that's it. Um, at this point, you know how to make a homemade toothpaste and you understand some of the benefits behind going a more natural route with your toothpaste, whether you decide to make it or not, versus using a conventional. Again, these are my views. I know that there are people that, um, you know, go with conventional dentistry and they will absolutely disagree with everything that I just said, and that's okay. But I've been doing this for about four to five years, making this toothpaste. I've switched around the recipe a little bit, but I haven't seen any issues. I actually get a lot of compliments on my teeth from dentists. And at 39 years old, I still do not have a cavity, nor have I ever had anything other than tooth cleanings. I'm going to say that's kind of lucky. So, well, it's not really lucky because genetically my parents both have cavities, um, and all sorts of other craziness, but my sister and I were the only two that haven't had cavities yet. And I really do attribute that to our nutrition and what we decide to do for oral care. Oral care. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I will also put the ingredients that I use personally for this. Of course, you can use different brands. And then I'll also put a couple of names of alternatives if you don't want to make the toothpaste yourself. Have a great day and until next time, see you later.